Channel 4 News is at 7.45. First of all, we hear from theologian Dr Robert Beckford, who presents some challenging views on the Twelve Disciples. Christians like me believe that 2,000 years ago, a group of 13 men met in a small room in Jerusalem to eat a Last Supper. The Last Supper is one of the world's most iconic images, famously painted by Leonardo da Vinci. The 13 men present are some of the most important people in the history of the world. According to the Bible, the Last Supper was the moment when Jesus announced to his 12 closest followers that he was about to die. That night, he was arrested, tried, and the following morning, he was crucified. It was a turning point for Jesus and his followers. His death could have spelt disaster for his new movement. Instead, it became one of the defining moments in the Christian story at Easter. I believe the world today more than ever needs committed disciples, people prepared to dedicate their lives to help others to fight injustice and oppression wherever it is found. So I'm going to go on a journey around the world to investigate the disciple stories and see how they've been used by the later church. How some of them are heroes, while others are evil villains and why some of Jesus' closest followers have been excluded, and to reveal the secrets of the 12 disciples. My search for the secrets of the Twelve Disciples begins in the ruins of one of the most important Roman cities in Asia Minor, Ephesus. When Leonardo da Vinci started painting The Last Supper in 1495, he was following a religious code that had its origins in the years after Jesus' death, a code that has shaped the Christianity we know today. I believe the real inspiration for this painting didn't come from da Vinci, but from another man 1,500 years earlier. According to the Bible, 40 days after the events of the Last Supper, the 12 disciples met again in the same room. The Holy Spirit descended on them and filled them with a new mission to go out as apostles to spread the message of Jesus. On a hillside above the ruins of Ephesus is a cave that is believed to have been dedicated to the real architect of Christianity, the first person to mention the Last Supper and the real brains behind the way it has been portrayed for the last 2,000 years, the Apostle Paul. But Paul wasn't at the Last Supper. He never met Jesus in the flesh and only converted after the crucifixion. I believe it was Paul's interpretation of the Last Supper and the role of the 12 disciples that has shaped the Christianity we know today. I would say that Paul was the most important figure in early Christianity. He was the one who left the important teaching of his alive till today. And he became almost better known than the Twelve. Paul overshadowed all the other apostles. He was one of the greatest disciples of Jesus Christ. Paul's story dominates the New Testament. Of the 27 books, 13 are accredited to Paul himself and two more to his followers. 
It was Paul that radically transformed Jesus' new movement from a Jewish sect into the Christianity we know today. But given that Paul's message was so different, so radical, as you've said, did some of the disciples resent him? We don't know exactly, although we have some uh, hints um, that there were reactions. Pauline letters uh, uh, were not accepted by all early Christians. Uh, there were some hostile reactions against Paul. Today, Paul is rightly revered as one of the central pillars of the early church. But 2,000 years ago, he faced a desperate struggle to get acceptance from the people who'd been closest to Jesus, the 12 disciples. Although later the church would try and play down the conflict, you can see it on the pages of the New Testament itself. A battle for the future direction of the new movement between those who wanted it to remain a narrowly Jewish sect and Paul, who wanted to widen its scope to the entire pagan world. Paul's main opponents in the battle for the future shape of Christianity can be found in da Vinci's painting too, although their real identities are hidden. Right on the very edges of the Last Supper are three disciples, Jude, Simon and James. But the Bible is strangely silent about them. The most intriguing question about these three is why we know so little about them. Why are they so obscure? After all, the disciples were the celebrities of their day. Is it because the gospel writers and later church fathers preferred that they remained in the shadows? Is it that their anonymity was no accident, but a deliberate ploy to hide a secret about their true origins? The names are interesting. James. Simon and a Jude. He's also called uh, Thaddeus. So some people know that name. So what I noticed and what other scholars have noticed is these names strangely correspond to the names of the brothers of Jesus. Just as today in Jewish society, family was extremely important in first century Jewish Palestine too. Like any other Orthodox Jew, Jesus had a family. A mother, a father, four brothers, and at least two sisters. But it seems that later Christian writers did their best to vilify them. One of the things that has stuck in a lot of people's heads, if you do mention the brothers of Jesus, they'll say, oh, but they didn't believe in him. Where is it in the Bible? There's one passage, one passage in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, where Jesus is going to go down to Jerusalem, and the brothers say, well, why don't you reveal yourself publicly? And the Gospel writer comments, they did not yet believe in him. It seems that Jesus' Jewish family was an embarrassment for the church. They couldn't be completely erased from the records as they were too well known. But as far as possible, any mention was kept to a minimum. They're living as Jews. They are Jews in every way. They're keeping the Jewish law, the Sabbath, the festivals. They are thinking of themselves as messianists, I think would be the word, uh, not Christian. What James, Judas and Simon believed stood in stark contrast to what most Christians, including myself, believe about Jesus today. They didn't see themselves as Christians, but as Galilean Jews, who had no interest in setting up a new religion, but reforming the old one. And they saw Jesus, their brother, as a Zadik, a righteous Jew, a teacher with a new code of ethics that could help people live a good life. The later Christian belief that Jesus was the Son of God, born of a virgin, who was sacrificed, then resurrected to save the world from sin, would have been completely alien to them.
Hidden away in the Armenian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem is an ancient cathedral dedicated to St. James, the brother of Jesus. According to tradition, his body is buried beneath the church. Why is James so important in the Armenian tradition? He is considered the head of the apostles, as it is described in the book of Acts. But particularly here in this cathedral, we have his body. He is buried here under the throne of the patriarch. And this cathedral is dedicated to his memory. In the Bible, if you decode the book of Acts of the Apostles, what emerges is that James was a key figure in the history of the early church. In fact, he took charge of the church after Jesus' death, not Peter and Paul, as later church tradition would have us believe. Countless later sources confirm him as the first bishop of Jerusalem, the headquarters of the new movement. According to an alternative story, it's hidden in the New Testament, but it's actually in the New Testament, but it's everywhere in later records. When Jesus dies, he turns things over to his brother James, not to Peter. According to all of our early sources, James is in charge. Jesus' brother is in charge of the movement. And after James's death, it was another of Jesus' brothers, Simon, who followed him as leader of the new movement. The Jesus family dynasty continued for at least another hundred years before disappearing from the pages of history. So what's going on here is an attempt by those writers that support Paul above James. They can't completely erase James and the brothers, but they, they minimize it. There's no passage in the New Testament where James gets the authority given by Jesus. And yet outside the New Testament, it's everywhere. The victors get to tell the story. The Jesus family began to lose control of the new movement when the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple in Jerusalem in AD 70, after a long and bloody siege. The focus of Christianity then moved to a new city, the capital of the Roman Empire, Rome. And from then on, Christianity